<laughs> good morning, Maria. Good morning. How are you? I am doing good. I mean, I was just going back and forth and things. We got in late last night and I'm trying to catch up on some stuff, but I'm there now. I'm good. I'm good. So what brought me to you was I go through um, uh, San Antonio Black Businesses and I want to focus this radio station beyond Black businesses, whether it's women, women owned, men owned, minority owned. I want everybody to know that we're out there doing things. And um, and the sad thing about it, nobody never, the guests that I bring on like you, they never heard of you before. So that is my job to make sure this is your platform for you to go out and tell everybody what you're doing and what you are doing, what you plan on doing. And um, I, I am happy to find out you turn around and say, sure, I'll be on your show. I mean... <laughs> It was out the wild blue, you know. I mean, that's what I do. I get people out the wild blue. When I mention the radio station, they say, we got a black radio station here in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> I get that all the time, and 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 I get that. So, but it was all good and everything. But um, um, so um tell us about your business and the things that you're doing. I noticed you started something in 2000. I'm trying to figure out what it was, but I'll let you go ahead and say it. Sure. So um, I'm Maria, the founder and CEO of Ivy League Nurse Concierge. Um, I started off as a mobile IV hydration, um, and then we opened a lounge last year, September of 22. So that's where I'm located right now um, in the lounge at Village at Stone Oak in north of San Antonio. Um, so I offer wellness and aesthetic services. And for wellness, it's um, IV hydration therapy, vitamin injections, um, as well as aesthetics in that consists of Botox, um, fillers, and platelet-rich plasma treatments, which a lot of people um, have not heard of. Um, so I offer those services as well as post some post-op care. Okay, so go back to one of the people that heard of that was what? You're saying you offer? The platelet-rich plasma is, is a concept that a lot of people haven't heard of. And what it is is we're drawing your blood, we're spinning it down, and we're getting the um, extracting the platelet-rich plasma from that. And you can use it um, in orthopedics, for example. They use it to inject joints um, for sports injuries or any joint-related injuries to help with the healing process. Um, it's great for microneedling facials. Um, I am in love with the microneedling with P we call it PRP for short facials because I suffer from a lot of hyperpigmentation um, from post acne scars and it has like literally cleared it up and like I'm loving my skin right now in the face that it's in um, and it's also used in the um, sexual rejuvenation so if you've heard of the O shot or the P shot before um, it, it helps with that as well. Okay, you say rejuvenation. The first thing I thought of was that crazy commercial rejuvenation. <laughs> that was <laughs> fun. So um, the process you said about acne with people with um, pimples and all that, I, I, I would say. So how is that addressed? Is, you talking about it takes care of the scarring that's left behind? Yes. From it? So with the microneedling with PRP, what it does is it, it's a pen and has a bunch of little needles, so tiny needles. So what it's doing is causing micro abrasions um, on your face or, or whatever area that you're treating. And as those abrasions heal, right, it's producing um, new skin cells, um, producing collagen. So it'll help tighten up that area. It will help clear up the hyperpig, like break up the hyperpigmentation. And as it clears, it just, it fades. So sometimes it takes a couple of treatments, um, maybe three to four treatments to see the full um, effect of it. But I, I absolutely love it. I've had it done on myself and it's it's done wonders for me. So basically it, it, it you get that treatment and it goes to your natural pigmentation that you that you naturally have, right? That you naturally have, yes. So we place the PRP as a serum on your face and then go over it with the micro needle. So it's getting into your, your skin. It's helping to rejuvenate those cells for a faster healing process. 
So um, you mentioned needles. So, you know, I'm going to ask this question. Does it hurt? <laughs> it, <laughs> it can be a little painful. We apply topical numbing cream. Um, so it should be fairly pain-free. Oh, wow. Uh, it's, it's just like we're going into the future and stuff you're doing right here. It's on the cutting edge, huh? Yeah. I <laughs> mean, in aesthetics, things change all the time. Well, medical change changes all the time. There's always something new um, coming out. And so you just have to stay up to date on it. And so that's why it, it takes a lot of um, education, because especially here in San Antonio, people are like, oh, I never, even with IV hydration therapy, a lot of people are like, oh, I never heard of that. Um, but when you go to places like Las Vegas or Miami, those big party cities, a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, IV hydration. Because when they're hungover, they'll go get an IV and, you know, get back to feeling 100% again. So let's go over that IV uh, hydration. Is it um like your body is dehydrated and you hydrate the body back again? Yep. You're replacing that fluid volume. You're, repl you're replacing those vitamins. Um, and minerals that they may have lost um, or just maybe depleted because you don't eat right, maybe. Or maybe, again, you've been out drinking. <laughs> um, you've been out exercising. Um, so, or like I said, not eating enough fluid, especially when it's so hot, such as San Antonio or in Texas in general. Um, you get a lot of fluid loss. Um, you can go outside and just stand there and just start sweating and just, you know, lose fluid volume. So you want to stay ahead of it. Um, I like to um, educate my clients on being proactive with their health. If you don't pay for it now, you will pay for it later. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really stress that with them. So you just want to kind of stay on top of it. A lot of times, again, we don't drink enough fluids like we should or eat as properly as we should. Um, so this is an, an alternative way for you to get those fluids and, and nutrients. Um, and it and it's fast acting because it's not going through the digestive process. It's readily available to the body. So you feel the effects, you know, within minutes. Because I know when you talk about um, being hydrated, I know I went to the doctor, oh, they do, do blood work. And she said, with charm, I says, choose. And it make me a difference which one it was. And she put the little deal around my arm to draw. She said, oh, my God. I said, what's wrong? I said, you are very hydrated. Because she just pooped and the blood just came on out. I just watched it and looked at it. She said, that doesn't bother you? I said, no, I'm curious. I watched her put the needle in and all the blood drawn out. She said, you know, believe it or not, she said, some of the biggest men in the world will faint when they see their blood. And I'm yeah. I'm just looking at it like it's, oh, okay, whoopie-doo. You know, it's no biggie to me. So <laughs> so, um, so with a hangover, uh, they drink all that alcohol. So what they're really doing is dehydrating their body because it's not really water. So does that help the hangover or just help? It just helps. It, it helps because a lot, a lot of people, you know, you're drinking a lot. So then comes the nausea and vomiting, you're urinating a lot. And so you're losing a lot of fluids and, and electrolytes. And so it, it just helps, it helps replenish it. I mean, we, I'm an ER nurse by trade. Um, so a lot of times, and I was in the military, we would get these soldiers that were drunk somewhere, EMS would bring them in and we give them a, what we call a banana bag and let them sleep it off. Mm. So yeah, I've just seen that you was you was in, in the military and stuff. So um how many years were you there? Was it twelve? Twelve years active duty, yes. Okay. And um so when you got out then, what what did you have in your mind with starting your business like you're doing right now? Did you have any idea you'd be where you're at right now? Um, I wasn't exactly sure where I was gonna be. I knew I wanted to be somewhere. Um the concept was really in my mind for a few years before I got out. But I just didn't think it would be feasible to start a business while I was on active duty. Um, so as I was transitioning, that's when I started. Um, you know, they have the, I think they call it SFL TAP. They they have this transitioning program where where you get to choose whether you want to go into the workforce. They have boots to business. There's so there's different tracks, and so I opted for the boots to business track. Um, that kind of gave you a general idea of how to start a business as far as legal structuring and um, things of that nature. So then it just kind of came from that. 
did that course or did that program. Um, I found a course. It was a IV hydration um, business startup course through Nursepreneurs. And so I took the course and really just kind of ran with it. Like they provided a lot of coaching, but me, I already had it planted in my, you know, that seed was already planted. So it was like, you give me the information and I'm going to execute. And, and that's what I did. So um, I'm happy to see that I'm still, still in business. It's just been a, a steady, you know, consistent process. I didn't come into business thinking I was going to blow up overnight because um, I'm really trying to build a brand mm -hmm. uh, and where I see it going in the future is lots of locations in other major cities um, in different states. Okay. Now, what effect at all did the pandemic had on you uh, starting off or in your planning stage? What effect did that have on your business? Um, the effects it had, I mean, with, so I just had to kind of be strategic about it. A, a lot of places were closed down. Um, so it was like, do I enter into a lease not knowing that, you know, everything could be shut down again and I'm paying on a lease and can't even use the space. Um, so that was one of the main reasons why I opted to start out as a mobile business. Um, because it wouldn't matter at that point. And so, and it actually fared very well um, because a lot of clients I received through word of mouth, um, some had COVID, so they would get like the immunity or the Myers cocktail. And so I was like on the go. And to be honest, I didn't realize how big San Antonio was until I started my business. Because I would have a client like way on the south side of town and then have to go way like in Converse for the next client. So then I had to factor in that commute time when I did my appointment. So it actually helped jumpstart my business. Um, in, in starting it during COVID, it actually was quite helpful. And, because and that then, need. Yeah, then you got to know San Antonio. <laughs> then I got to know San Antonio, yeah. <laughs> and you're right, San Antonio, um, land-wise, is massive and big. If it, it took you... 45 minutes ago from one, that's on a good day, but with traffic, it may take up to two traffic. hours to get from one side of town to the other. Yes. You know, so San Antonio land-wise is massive, but we're the seventh largest city in America. But if people come down here and drive, like I said, it could be thunderstorm there on your side of town. Over here, it'd be sunshine. Mm -hmm. and that's how big this town is. <laughs> so yeah. I feel you on that. So, um, I want to go into about the, the IV. I know that um, uh, a lot of people have problems in um, finding the, the the vein to put the IV needle in and stuff. And it that's a technique. I think it's a technique because I don't think I could do it. But I see people with nightmare stories saying they stuck me seven, eight times, had to get somebody else in here trying to find the blood vessel. How How does that vary? Why is it so hard? I mean, it is a skill set. It's a skill set um, that honestly, some nurses don't have. We, we're all taught how to do an IV. However, it's almost like a perishable skill. If you don't use it, you lose it. So you could be a med surge nurse and have not start an IV or not, you know, be comfortable with starting one because you've never really had to. Um, again, as an ER nurse, we start the IVs there in the ER. And then they're transferred to one of the floors. So the IV is already there. And if the patient is not there for very long, then there's they don't have a need to necessarily um, change it out. Or they may just have difficulty because um, we get calls all the time from other floors like, hey, can someone come and start an IV? Um, it is a skill. And so sometimes you can't see it, but you feel it. So you know, you know, and knowing the anatomy, you know where it is, um, you know where to look. So, and, and, and it happens and, you know, I strive to do a one-time stick, but sometimes, you know, it might be two <laughs> or <laughs> three, you know, you know, yeah. we, we, we strive for one, but it happens, right? We're human and to air is human. So, and, and so I, I, this is funny because I did have a client that, I mean, I, I honestly think I had to stick her five times. Um, and I was actually with my colleague and we were both just like, 
But then, so she was very dry, had not been drinking fluids, or I think she was drinking like a lot of caffeinated beverages, which doesn't help. Um, and then she was like, oh, I forgot to mention, like I was in a sauna the other day and I'm like, oh, the plot thickens. Like you're very dry and her veins were probably flat. Um, so then that can pose, you know, some difficulty in trying to start an IV. So is it safe for somebody when, a, when they want to come to your, your your place and they want to get that done, do you advise them to drink plenty of fluid? Or how how far in advance do they drink fluid so they be hydrated? I know for a fact that um, when I worked outside at my younger age, I start my hydration period the day before. I know I'm going to be out in the sun and I'm drinking my water before, during, and all that time right there. Mm -hmm. So um, what does drinking water, uh, being hydrated, how does it affect your blood vessels for you to uh, get an IV? Well, yeah, definitely if you hydrate the day before that, you know, you have a little more volume, it's, your veins will, you know, be more apparent. Um, and so it's easier for them to pop up once we put the tourniquet on, you know, you'll feel it, you'll see it, you'll feel it. Um, there's some people that they they stay hydrated, so they don't, you don't even have to put a tourniquet on, you see their veins, they're like, yeah, you know, very, we call like juicy, juicy veins, they just kind of pop out. So but, um, I mean, I've done, you know, as an ER nurse, pediatrics, and they have very tiny veins. So, like I said, it, it's a skill. Um, we do prefer that you have, you know, you hydrated some, but we understand that, you know, due to work, working outside or activities that you do, that you may not be hydrated. So, um, we find ways. Yeah, I bet you do. Now, do do sometimes that you bypass the arm and maybe go into the leg or anything? Um, I've never had to go to someone's leg. If if, um, if we can't get in the hand, then we will shoot for what we call like the AC. Most people prefer the AC because the hand is quite painful. Um, some people prefer the hand, surprisingly. But um, I've never had to go on someone's leg or or anything. Yeah, when I had when I was in the hospital one time, they 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 looked at my vein just sitting there on top of my hand right there without no if ands but just yeah, stuck it right there and went on the mirror. Right there, yeah. It was, <laughs> yeah. But I've had um I've had a gentleman not in my business but as, as uh, working in a as a pre op doing IVs and he had very juicy veins they were popping up, but he could tell he tanned a lot and. I can see the veins, but anytime I would insert the catheter, like I didn't get any blood return back. Um, so I'm just like, what is going on? And, and I just feel like maybe like his his skin was very like rubbery. It's like probably, it probably put like a plug in the little cannula to where just like you put it in and then it's just, you know, skin in there. So it, it didn't really work. I, I don't know. I was baffled by that. And I was just like, I don't know. But he did have some pretty tough skin from all the tanning. Uh, uh, last question about IVs. Uh, uh, what I want to ask is, somebody's on blood thinner, do you ask them that before you go ahead and give them an IV? Because, you know, if you're on blood thinner, you sort of bleed for a, a while, don't you? It doesn't clot right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you would need to know that just to know, you know, you want to know that they would bleed a little bit more easily, um, letting them know that they may bruise at the area where the IV is, and they may need to apply more pressure once it's um, taken out a little bit longer than the normal person because of um, that factor that they bleed more easily. Okay, so we cover IV. You know, what other, other, other things that you do besides that? So the IV hydration, um, if you, don't want to sit there and wait for, to, you know, the 30 minutes to an hour to get an IV. You can do just the regular vitamin injections, um, which is basically a shot. Um, I love like the B12 shots. Um, I get one like every week. It keeps my energy levels up. That's what I was going to ask you about that. I got somebody, I'm, I was, I'm glad you um, said that. It's I get a B12 shot um, 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 every week. I said, for what? To give me energy. I said, really? You do? If somebody asked me, do I get one? 
Because I'm up at five in the morning every morning. And I'm like, this. See, you are always up. I have always got up at five o'clock in the morning and I'm ready to go. It's just, it's just me. That's just me. But they do see when I get tired, like eight or nine o'clock at night, I get tired. They make fun of me when I go to where they're singing somewhere at. I show up in there. They, the first thing they say, isn't it past your bedtime? <laughs> Isn't it your curfew? But I'm up at five o'clock every morning. Sometimes I beat the alarm. Me and my, my wife uh, laugh about that. I say, why do you set the alarm when you beat your alarm clock up every morning? At 445, it's like automatic. I'm up. And that's what I a B12 shot. I said, imagine if I got one, how I would, would react. You'd be really up and ready to go. <laughs> well, I mean, and it's a, your, your sleep cycle, your body's used to being up at a certain time. And but then it's also used to winding down at a certain time. Yeah. Uh, for me, and I just know like when I don't have it, I, I might wake up early. That's waking up. Am I gonna get out of bed? That's another story. <laughs> <laughs> I would just sit there in bed and just be thinking about like, why do I have to get up? No, I know I have to get up, but you know, it it just when I when I take the B12, I'm like, all right, I'm up. What do I need to get done today? Yeah. You know, and I, I have just the energy to kind of do what I need to do for the for the week. Okay. Now, somebody mentioned me about um the vitamin K. You know anything about the vitamin K? Vitamin K? Yeah. That's not something that I offer now. Okay, that was just something I just brought that up and anything. So you do the B twelve, and what is the other shots you do? Um, there's B twelve. There's um, glutathione, which is an antioxidant, um, and that's good for helping boost your immune system and rid your body of free radicals. Um, it's also I don't advertise this, but um, skin lightening <laughs> mm. can be like a, a, an effect from that. Um, also do like amino blends and um, a lipoline injection, which helps with um, increase your metabolism and help jumpstart your weight loss. Mm -hmm. uh, also vitamin C. Um, most of the injections that I have can be given as uh, an injection. So say, you know, maybe you went to the doctor and you were deficient, your vitamin D was deficient or something, that you could get like a vitamin D um, three injection. Okay, now I'm gonna ask a stupid question because when I was growing up, <laughs> the, the doctor always say, every time I was there, drop your pants, bend over, bam, right in the butt. <laughs> he has to check your prostate. Huh? He has to check your prostate. But no, he gave me a shot in the butt. This is when I was a kid, uh, I'm on a okay. shot. That's how they gave shots was in the butt. Well, yeah, you can, yeah. Yeah, but... but Sometimes, like, the lipoline injection, it's a little painful. Um, so my clients will prefer to get it in their glute because, okay. you know, in their arm, it's just, you know, it's more painful. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then, too, you know, the more you move that extremity or what have you you know it helps the soreness go down a lot quicker so we yeah. know you're going to be up and walking and everything um so you may not notice it as much as as you would if you received the injection in your your shoulder okay i want to go back to the shot that boosts your metabolism mm -hmm. um, that is a lot of people have issues with that because as you get older um it sort of slows down and and you eat erratic um, one big meal a day, and then that's it. Uh, according to one of the doctors, say that's bad for you. You should eat throughout the day so your metabolism get the going in order for you to lose weight. Well, I decided to do that about a year or two ago. I changed my lifestyle, and I really did it um, three months ago. And when I went to the doctor this past time around, my A1C was down four points. Everything was down. And I lost 22 pounds. And they said, what are you doing? I said, um, watching what I eat. That mm -hmm. was the thing. Leaving beer alone. <laughs> Some of the things I were doing, I said, my refrigerator in my office used to be filled with beer. Now it's filled with water. And uh, when I get a craving for a beer, I grab a water. That's how I started tapering away from beer by drinking water. Drinking water. Now it's common. I'm drinking water all day. And, and I said, that's all I've been doing. 
Well, they said, well, I expect for your A1C to be in the range next time around. And probably you lose another um, um, 19, 20 pounds along the line, but don't lose too much because then you're going to look like you're sick. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I was doing. I was curious about that shot. Is is that giving the um, metabolism a jump start for it to start yeah. working? It helps regulate your hormones and it helps, you know, increase your, your metabolism. And then, like you said, being more mindful of what you're eating. Um, I, I understand we want to have our sweets or what have you, but you have to, you know, everything in moderation, but you have to be more mindful of what you eat. And then you're right, more frequent meals will help your metabolism, you know, um, stay on top of what you're doing um, versus you eating less frequently. It, it's going to slow down. Like, why would it go quicker? You, it doesn't even know when your next meal is going to be. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> like I eat and my beer in your office. That <laughs> what's that? I said beer in your office re refrigerator. Not anymore. <laughs> okay. Okay. Not anymore. But I, I went on to my wheat crackers and um, stuff like that. Uh, a lot of seafood. Um, I'm not gonna lie to everyone. So I have a um, a free day where I go to. It's just that one meal. It's not the whole day. It's just mm -hmm. one meal. I go and get something I haven't had in a while, something I shouldn't be having, but I do that every once in a while. But and that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Said everything in moderation. Um, what we don't realize, and I, I didn't realize this a few years ago. Um, I actually, I actually, well, I was in the military, and I used to always have to be taped, but I always passed tape. And so there was this time where I didn't pass tape, and I was like, "Hold up, wait a minute, like what's what's going on." And so I was very upset with myself. Um, and so I was determined. I was like, I'm going to make it to where I don't even have to be taped anymore. And I was, again, just being more mindful. I went to this doctor. Um, I would do the B12 injections every week. Um, again, being mindful of what I eat. I wrote down what I ate. And then I would try to substitute. So instead of eating like cookies, I, I like the sugar-free Jello and Cool Whip, so that would like curb my my sugar craving, or not curb it, but like satisfy my sugar craving. Right. And so as far as, and then I started being more mindful of what has sugar in it. And then now I started looking at labels, like everything has sugar, things that you wouldn't think, you know, that would have sugar has sugar in it. Like I don't put sugar in my spaghetti and I will look at the jar and it's like, has all these, you know, um, all this sugar in it. And I'm like, why? Why does this have sugar? So starting to be more mindful. And I'm like, that's why, you know, everybody's blood sugar is up because all of the added sugar that they put, you know, in foods. Mm -hmm. And so I started just substituting and just being more mindful. Um, so I eat, you know, some vegetables. I love spinach. I like broccoli, asparagus, um, eggs. I'll eat breakfast, lunch, and, and dinner. Um, Sometimes when I didn't want to cook, I'd eat cereal, but that's a lot of sugar. The milk has sugar. <laughs> Everything has sugar. So <laughs> I think they <laughs> said eating that. I think they said the worst thing it was introduced into the uh American was the corn syrup. Because mm. everything with corn syrup, you can't cook without corn syrup. Oh boy. So what I did was I went out and bought all the spices. Mm -hmm. I, I do not buy the package taco seasoning and all that stuff. I bought all the spices that go and all that and I make my own seasoning. So there's no salt added, no nothing. And um, I drink my tea unsweet, coffee unsweet. They said, how can you drink that? I look at them and smile, say one sip at a time because <laughs> it doesn't bother me because that's how I drink it. And so when I went on that, started making my own stuff and everything, um, I noticed that. So when I go to a restaurant, I turn food away. I said, this is too salty. I can't eat this. And I tell them, that was wrong. It's too salty. Well, how do you know? If you don't eat salt all the time and then you run across it, it's too salty. It's too salty. Mm -hmm. And so that's just so with salt, right? Too much salt helps it, you know, will make you retain water. And so then your weight goes up. Mm -hmm. And then sugar, you have too much sugar, your body's not using it all. So now it's stored as, you know, in your fat cells and now that's more weight. Um, 
So again, being mindful, especially in the minority communities, because we love our food seasoned. And so, yeah. And you just have to be mindful, cut back on the, on the salt and the sugar. Yeah. Good old greens. Can't use that pork salt anymore and all that stuff in them greens and stuff. Oh, the taste, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. Got to do what you got to do. I, I've tried using instead of like a ham hog, like the smoke, smoked turkey leg. Yes. You know, so it's not as salty, but again, that's why, that's where you try to substitute for something else that, that you may like. I know, um, my mom taught me this trick that she would, um, you know, when they used to use the ham hocks cooking, they let it cook all the way down and there's splinters of bones all in and all that stuff. So, ooh. so she said, get some cheesecloth, put your turkey leg and a couple of jalapenos in, in that, tie it up. You still get everything coming out of there, but you won't have all that all mixed all that. Mm -hmm. And I started doing that and somebody asked me one day, how come yours don't have all this? And I said, well, I cooked it like that. It's still, it's great. Like my wife, I told her that I'm going to start charging her boss for me cooking. They have a function they cook. I cooked greens one time. I didn't get not even one spoonful of the greens. They ate it all up. <laughs> then it was barbecue. I smoked the brisket and all this. I said, well, I don't work there. Why am I doing this? <laughs> you know, but they don't know like, for instance, I use a lot of turkey meat when I cook. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, people could claim up and down. They could tell turkey meat for anything. So one day somebody asked me, asked me to make some chili. I made it out of turkey meat. I didn't tell nobody nothing. And the person who was eating the turkey, this is the best chili I ever taken. I don't like turkey meat. They was eating that turkey meat up there. And I didn't tell them. I left it alone. Because sometimes <laughs> you can tell. You just go by. It's in your mind. It's your mindset. You know, so, you know, that's what I do. I mess with people on purpose. That's funny. So what you're saying is uh, I need to come get a plate of brisket and some collard greens. Well, is it is that all you heard? <laughs> <laughs> when I do that, I'm going to give you a call and let you know. <laughs> Dinner is served. <laughs> I will hold you in mind next time I do that. All right. I would definitely let you know. So um, what you got coming up on the horizon you want to share with the people? Um, so let's see. We just started um, offering uh, Wagovi or semaglutide. That's another, um, it helps with controlling your diabetes and, and weight loss. That whole, uh, stop right there. What you just said, say that again. Can you send that to him? Because I'm type two. Okay. And I've been working. That's why my A1C was way up there and I'm bringing it down. My goal is to start getting off medication altogether. That is mm -hmm. my goal. And that's why I want to know what you just brought up. I'm very interested. In. Can you get into more details about that? Yes. So we'll go. So they had Ozempic, which is for um, people who have diabetes to help control their diabetes and with weight loss. Now they have Wagovi, which is for weight loss. Um, you'll, you'll hear it's semaglutide all the time. Um, but what it is, is a weekly injection and it helps, um, with appetite suppression and, and your glucose control. It's, uh, it helps with weight loss. So a lot of people have been seeing good effects from it. Um, I was a little hesitant to start offering it because there was saying that there was a shortage of it. And so people who have diabetes, they need it, couldn't get it. Um, because their pharmacy didn't have it. So I didn't want to contribute to the problem. Um, but since then it's, it's been found that it's not, uh, there's not a shortage, um, issue at all. So, but that is, um, something new of this month that we started offering. Okay. That, and so you don't see, I, all I heard was diabetes and you heard, um, greens and, and brisket. So. <laughs> I heard that. I'm hungry. I haven't had breakfast yet. Me neither. I, I just went, think my lights went off in my head. I said, I'll be calling you after uh, later on and because uh, I want to know more about that. And, and what other stuff you have going on besides that? Um, as far as I, I do plan on having an event. Um, so in January, we 
had what we called what I called a paint paint and drip um because with a with having the lounge I want to do some wellness um events um I'm an introvert so I like small social gatherings <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so um, probably coming up in the next few weeks, I'll do an event. I'm thinking about doing the charcuterie board. So come and make a charcuterie board, have some promotions on some of the services that um, we offer here. Um, and I, I'll put that information out. Um, I do have social media. So if you can follow me on um, Ivy League Nurse Concierge is my business uh, Instagram page. And I believe nurse um, on Facebook. You can find me there. And that's it. Right now, I'm, I'm really hoping I filed for my trademark. So I'm just patiently waiting for that to be finalized. And from there, I'm hoping to open uh, another location. Ooh, look at you. Look at you. I like what I'm hearing. Well, you know, whenever you have some events, I'm going on, please let us know so we get the word out. And also, if you do something that you need um, some music or anything, don't hesitate to reach out to WSN Radio. We can, we can help you out with that, too, or live. Oh, I do. I have a little jingle. Yeah. <laughs> you got a jingle? So the Bus and Breakfast, I love I love their jingle. And so oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got to get together with her because uh, I still haven't went down to on my cheat day I need oh, to get yes. together with her because she definitely me, has to be a cheat day. Yeah. She, she sat there and told me she got the hamburger for me. She already said that. So I'm at the uh, uh give her a call this week. Say, I got a cheat day coming up. I got to pick one day this week what it's going to be. And I'm going to go down there and visit her. Mm -hmm. So, and, and she, her banana pudding is <sighs> amazing to me. Yeah. Oh, you you need know, moderation, everything in moderation. moderation. I don't know. You put a bowl of banana pudding in front of me, uh, you and me, banana pudding. It'll allow be a fight over that pudding, girl. I might have to fight you because <laughs> it's that good. Yeah, I heard. So, you know, when I get off, get off the show, I'm going to give her a call and I'm going to come up with my day and I'm going to go down and I'm going to let you know the day I'm going down so, so I can tell you how good it was. She tell me you won't have another hamburger like this. So wh why are we promoting her? Oh, because she's a black <laughs> business. Yeah, a I know. Black -owned I business, know. a woman-owned business. Yes, yes, and and I love when I first talked to her. Oh man, it was something else. She does. She's lit up like a Christmas tree. And then she said, "Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm gonna text you. You gotta call so and so, so." She was naming a whole list of people on there, and you were on the list. Just name and name and name it. Get them, get them. Do this, do that, and that's and I did. I listened to her. And I still hear her in my ear right now telling me things, you know, but uh, and we're going to do some things together, too. So uh, I just want to just um, the things we're talking about, getting people together, doing a great big event outdoors. We're thinking about doing something like that. And they were blessed for um, getting a, a brick and mortar, too. Yes. Yep. She's getting that together. Yeah. I hope she's listening. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking yeah. at and we do events as well. Um, we just recently did um, a health fair that we were blessed to be able to be a part of over at New Creations Christian Fellowship. Yeah. Um, and at there I was doing the free B12 shots. Um, so I, I was like back to back just <laughs> giving B12. So it's funny because you say some people are scared of needles. And so I was surprised. I was like, oh, wow. They're like, okay, I'm here for it. I think after the pandemic, everybody takes a shot, so they're not scared anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need a shot. You need this. You need that. But, yeah, so that is real good. Like I said, my offer is up. If you have anything, you need anything from the radio station, we'll be more than willing to help you out any way we can. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate you having me on today. Okay. And it would be more times we have you on. When you have your events coming up, we want to get you on so we could put things out, let everybody know what's going on, okay? Absolutely. All right. It was an honor having you on today. Starting off May 1st. Uh, what else is May 1st? Um, We've got... Ohio, we got Mother's Day. Mother's uh, Day. Uh, Memorial Day. Memorial Day. And it is... Uh, what's the other one? Month. Oh, I can't think of it now. 
boy, it just, it just blind, just, psh, this is the month of, um, come on, Ron, think of it, think of it. It'll come to me. I, I completely just went blank on this one. <laughs> but anyway, Maria, we thank you for coming on. And uh, I will give you a call later on this week to ask about the deal about diabetes because I'm very interested in that. Absolutely. I'll be here. Okay. You take care. You too. All bye right. Bye. bye.